Um, I called my presentation uh, The Road to Automation. It's uh, not pretentious here, but I just wanted to go back a little bit and look forward. Uh, I think uh, you are familiar with your NCAP and what, what we are there for. Uh, it, it's really a consumer information program trying to explain uh, very complex material, in fact, about what, is, what makes safety, what makes a car safe in, in simple terms, in a star rating that everybody can uh, easily understand. Uh, over the last 20 years, we kind of uh, developed into an organization that also is very forward-looking. We are looking forward to see the new technology, what it can bring to improve the situation, and also how we can actually help getting the technology into the marketplace. Of course, making things standard is, is uh, one big uh, part of that discussion. But uh, the program has become very successful. Uh, right now, 95% of new car sales is covered by a star rating. Even cars that are born with a star on the nose are five-star cars nowadays. Um, it's good to remind ourselves who's behind your NCAP. Uh, we are living in times where uh, speaking about Europe and European uh, collaboration is not very fashionable. Uh, but I think your NCAP is an example of what you can reach, what you can achieve by working together. So we have various member states involved. We have automobile clubs, insurer associations that are present everywhere in Europe, as well as insurance industry. And so that, that multi, uh, those multi aspects have made URAC, URAC a very robust and a very stable and very successful program. We also work with many different uh, test facilities around Europe, uh, something that's also quite important to have that European dimension reflected in, in our work. Um, at a time like this, when we look back 20 years and look forward, it's always nice to kind of look back and say, okay, have we, how have we evolved over time? Where did we start and where did we end up? And if I look back at the last 20 years, I can, I can clearly see four phases. And the phase is getting shorter and shorter because technology is going faster and faster. But the first 10 years of your NCAP, if you would have to put a label on it, it's basically improved structures and restraints. That's what we, what we're there for. We started off uh, on a regulatory basis, improving and try to enhance the situation in the marketplace, improve things like curtain uh, airbag technology, uh, other airbag, passenger airbags, which weren't standard at all at the time that we started. From that early success, I think the appetite was developed, came along to, to say, can we use this for other things? And this is where I think the second phase of NCAP started looking at safety for all road users, looking for not only fatal but also non-fatal injuries. Things like whiplash are a very good example of the type of test that we introduced in the rating system at that time. From that period onwards, so actually starting 2012, 13, uh, we really saw uh, the presence of ADAS technology uh, becoming more apparent in the, in, the, in the market. And that we wanted to reflect that. We saw more and more evidence that that technology is actually delivering uh, for a benefit in terms of safety. And we wanted to recognize that important role that ADAS plays uh, in the rating. And so that's where we started to include some of the earlier ADAS technologies, AEB, low speed, high speed, uh, lane departure warning, into the rating scene. And these were systems that were already quite a long time in the marketplace, but the fact that we actually developed tests for them, we actually made them uh, standard or promoted to be, to be standard, really helped uh, accelerate the uptake of that technology and also the improvement of the capabilities of the technology in the market. I think we, we now in a new phase uh, around this period, what I would label as the foundations of automation. And that's why it's so relevant for today. Uh, it's clear that ADAS will not go away. We will have more and more sensors, uh, more and more combined technology into the vehicle, uh, algorithms that are very smart, uh, that self are se will be self-learning in the future. And all, those, all that technology will really start to facilitate uh, taking some of the more the, the driver tasks out of uh, from the driver away to even make the whole system uh, safer. If you look at uh, last year, for instance, um, we already saw in our program and the cars that we tested, and we tested almost 70 vehicles last year, that 90% of those were had AEB fitted on the vehicle. So the hardware for that is present in many many vehicles already. 82 had speed assistance systems available. Also, again, the technology is in the vehicles today as standard. And 55 already had kind of a lane support technology. I show here the Volvo XC60, which was 
had a score of 95% safety assist, which is, was fully kitted and, and did an excellent job in, in meeting that standard. But what it tells you is that the actual hardware for automated driving is already in many, many vehicles present. That doesn't mean that they are ready to drive uh, automatically, but I think from the economical point of view, we are making progress. I think it's recognized that um, automation and further automation, uh, relieving the driver from difficult tasks and supporting the driver, assist the driver in safe driving, is actually a very good way to realize the vision zero that everybody has. Um, I think that potential can only be realized if we talk about safe automation. That's, I think, the concept that we are talking about here today in our, in our launch, is what is safe automation? So at, at the moment, we are not there yet that we have all cars automatically driving themselves. Uh, we have a system where the technology can actually safely support the driver task. But if we want to do that in a safe manner, we have to make sure that a few things are taken care of, that the system that we ultimately deliver, combination of car and driver, is, is going to be safe, right? And so this is where a number of these new criteria come in. So how is, it, how is the, the, the system named? What is the consumer uh, perspective or understanding of the system? Uh, is it following the, the, the laws? Uh, what is the status? Does the driver know what the status of the car is at all times? Does it retain a record of who is driving, who is in control? Uh, are there sufficient backup systems? Is active and passive safety fully equipped? Uh, what about a safe stop if something goes wrong? What are the capabilities? What is the design domain of these systems? So these are the new criteria that we have to work with. And you will see from today's launch, and Richard will present that, that already for these level two systems that we talk about today, some of these things become already really critical and important to look at. So. Of course, technology is one side. We also have to look at uh, the consumer perspective. Um, Global NCAP, Thatcham and Eurancap uh, funded a small consumer survey just the other month to see what uh, consumer perspectives and the consumer's understanding are about what uh, automation really means and, what it, and if, if it's already available today. And, and you will see that there's still quite a big mismatch between what consumers in various countries understand what a car can do and potentially can do versus what is being on the road today. So three examples here. Uh, is it possible to purchase a car today that drives itself? Actually, uh, two-thirds two of the people actually replied yes with that, probably or certainly, right? So people have the belief that they can actually buy a car that ultimately can drive itself, even though that's not necessarily the case or certainly not the case. Um, the other aspect that we asked for is how, how long can you actually drive without taking your hands with, with the hands off the wheel? It's something that is actually legally not, not allowed for a very long time. But people have apparently the impression that that could, can go on for over 10 minutes without any problem. The cars are safe enough, robust enough that that can happen without any problem. And that's also not how these systems have been designed at all. And last but not least, maybe a slightly funny one. So what would you be tempted to do if you are driving a car using assisted driving or autopilot? Uh, 10 to 15% of the people say it would be perfectly uh, sane to look at a DVD while driving or look at your, look at your tablet. That would be a, a, safe, a safe way of using that vehicle. Now, these are uh, obviously not, not telling the whole story, but it gives you an idea of how some of the consumers actually look at this technology uh, and, and kind of believe the hype that this is around the corner and that cars tomorrow will drive us everywhere and they don't have to care about anything anymore. So our results that we are published today will sort of balance that message out. That's our intention, to give more idea. It doesn't mean that we will say that these systems are bad, they are good, but they are designed for a certain purpose and they should be used in a certain way. And I think that's what our story will be for today. Uh, so uh, thank you again for coming, and I hope that you will uh, enjoy being here. Thank you.